So yes, the Paris Agreement really was a, a watershed moment, a paradigm shift, if you like. Um, it's the first time for 25 years that we've had a, uh, a global agreement. We have 190-something countries pointing in the same direction. We have political leadership all aligned, public opinion largely behind that political leadership. And these are the things which also then contribute to business leadership and to business confidence. These, these are necessary conditions. They're not sufficient conditions, but they are very necessary and very important conditions for investors. And, and being very concrete, it's these kinds of things which can provide um, visibility on the future, a roadmap, if you like. That's what investors like. To, like. They need to see 15 years ahead. They want to see where a country is going and they want to understand how they can contribute, how they can benefit from that experience. They do, of course, also want stability of that policy. They want to know the governments will maintain that policy. But most important is, is the clarity and the visibility of where the policy is. So the single most important uh, instrument for directing investment from high to low carbon is going to be carbon pricing. Um, this can either be determined freely on a market basis, such as Europe has tried with the emissions trading system, or it can be a carbon tax, as some countries are now shifting towards. But important is that there should be a price, because it is only with a price that investors will then be able to internalise uh, what has up until now been an externality, that is to say something which doesn't cost investors anything. They can put as much greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and they don't have to pay for it. And conversely, the people who are adopting low carbon technologies, they get no benefit from the fact that they are financing low carbon technologies. So carbon pricing is the first policy, I think. I think a second policy which is important is to be very systematic uh, in factoring climate risk into investment decisions. This is partly through carbon risk, but not only through carbon, um, but also a resilience, uh, uh, adaptation risks, all these kinds of things. And we need to change, if you like, the, the, the investment paradigm, the, the, the factors that, that all investors take into account in their due diligence. I think a third policy um, is, is support for new technologies. Um, we have seen enormous progress in the last 20 years with wind technologies and now with solar technologies, but we need to do the same things for other technologies, and particularly for marine technologies um, and, and uh, also for biofuels, I believe. I think investors can profoundly influence uh, climate change uh, and, and very positively. Um, I mean, I think the first thing they must do is, is, is make sure that they are uh, factoring in some of the things we talked about previously, so due diligence, comprehensive due diligence, which integrates all of the, the climate considerations. I think the second thing they should do probably is set themselves targets. Um, big investors who have enormous portfolios, they probably want to diversify those portfolios, but they should give themselves milestones to systematically move those in portfolios across to, if not a fully decarbonized basis, at least uh, a much reduced decarbonized uh, basis. Um, they should probably introduce carbon accounting. Already some enlightened companies are introducing uh, environmental accounting. They look at the carbon footprint of the, of the company or even of the household, the, the domestic, uh, the heating bills, uh, the travel bills, all those kinds of things. Um, but this can be done on a more more sophisticated basis um, and, and should be done. And I think the final thing is, um, in, in that respect, is disclosure. Uh, to be absolutely open, to be absolutely transparent, especially if you are a big listed company, because it's only in that way um, that, that shareholders, that investors, small investors, will understand really uh, the risks of what they are buying or, or selling. They need to see uh, a complete disclosure of, of the carbon risk and indeed the more general environmental risk. A final point, I think, which um, where investors can, can help. Well, we, we see a lot about divestment, of course. You know, divestment is, is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it's probably better to see divestment as the consequence of something else. And that's something else it would be a very explicit valuation in portfolios of carbon risk and of the risk of what we call carbon stranding. 
classic example of carbon stranding are often companies which have got big underground deposits of, of hydrocarbons, of oil or of coal, uh, and the reality is probably that a significant percentage of those underground assets are never going to be usable because simply it won't be economic, it won't be, it won't be environmentally sustainable. And uh, uh, that represents a very high risk to the valuation of those companies and the investors who are buying or selling those companies should be making an adjustment, an explicit adjustment for those kinds of risks.